I am making an Ice Barrier deck profile. I mainly got the idea to build this deck because one of my friends gave me the idea of, oh hey, you have Fabled, so why not build Ice Barrier, Maturia, or some of the other decks out of Hit and Arsenal, Chapter 1, and then just have a Chapter 1 duel. And then I thought, went, that's a great content idea. So here I am making an Ice Barrier deck profile. Ice Barrier seems, actually seems kind of fun, just because of the three dragons. I hardly ever make it to the Dualorin. But overall, this deck seems like it's fun. Especially when you able to summon some of the monsters in the deck. So starting off with the monsters, I play two copies of Hexa, Spirit of the Ice Barrier. Hexa has the effect of Flight Control, another Ice Barrier monster. Monster your opponent controls, loops 500 attack and defense. Hardly ever matters. But during your main phase, you can send a level 3 or lower Ice Barrier monster from your deck to the graveyard. And if you do, it... Hex against that monster's level until the end of the turn. Or, it doesn't gain it level, it so it becomes that monster's level until the end of the turn. You can only use each effect of, you can only use that effect of Hexa's Spear of the Ice Barrier once per turn. Then I play one copy of Cryomancer of the Ice Barrier. This card just says, while you control another Ice Barrier monster, level 4 or higher monsters can't attack. And then I play two, three copies of Zuijin of the Ice Barrier. This card can attribute itself to another Ice Barrier monster from your hand. And, or level 5 or higher Ice Barrier from your hand, my bad. And then, if this card's in your graveyard, other than turning to the there, you can target... You can target one level three or higher water monster you control. It is solved by two, and if you do, special summon this card, but Banshee will lose the field. So I just like this card because how it can summon itself back from the graveyard or tribute itself to summon level five or higher monster. It's so like if you're going first and you have one of the, or I think it's actually the only general in this deck. Then I play the one copy of Defender of the Ice Barrier. Defender just says, while you control another Ice Barrier monster, your opponent cannot tar cannot declare attacks. Or declare an attack if if their attack is greater than or equal to this card's defense. So I just like because of how if you can try less another Ice Barrier, then your opponent can attack or can't attack with anything that's bigger than 1600. Then I play two copies of Silent Angler just for level 4 extenders. And that can summon themselves just by controlling your water, but if you do, you can summon more water monsters from your hand. Then I play three copies of Speaker of the Ice Barrier. If you control another Ice Barrier monster, defense position monsters your opponent controls cannot change their battle positions. I don't know, so anyway. You can only use each effect of each of its following effects of Speaker of the Ice Barrier once per turn. And then if you control an Ice Barrier monster, you can special summon a card from your hand. And then you can banish it from the graveyard to then special summon an Ice Barrier token. So I was lucky because if you see Speaker uh, with Silent Angler and one of your three copies of Revealer of the Ice Barrier, you can also summon Revealer, special the uh, Speaker, and then special summon the Silent Angler. And then you have three level four monsters, so you could technically do Bahamut Shark and Toad things. That actually wouldn't be that bad an idea. Hmm. Anyway, Revealer of the Ice Barrier has the effect of why control another Ice Barrier monster your opponent cannot tribute summon. And then you can only use each of the following effects of Revealer of the Ice Barrier once per turn. And those are once per turn you discard one card, special summon an Ice Barrier monster from your deck. Also, you... You cannot special summon monsters from, for the rest of this turn except water monsters. And if you would discard or send a card from hand to grave, then you can act activate or to activate an ice barrier monster effect, you can manage this card from your grave instead. So pretty much on this deck, all that really does is if you have a revealer in grave and you summon a revealer, it activates effect and you banish the revealer in grave instead. That's it. Then I play three copies of General Wayne. This is the reason why I play the three Zuijin in this deck. So that if you go first and see Wayne, then you can just tribute that, summon Wayne, and then Wayne's effect is 
Uh, if your opponent controls the monster and you control an ice barrier monster, you can special summon this card. And then when it's summoned, then you can add an ice barrier spell trap from deck to your hand. You can only special summon it by its own effect once per turn. You can only act with that effect once per turn. Ooh, curious. And then while it's faced up on the field, your opponent's spells and traps are banished instead of going to the grave. I knew it had some other effect, I just couldn't remember what it was. That is it for the monsters. Moving on to the spells, I play one copy of Monster Reborn. Just because Monster Reborn is actually decent in this deck. Just target one monster in the grave, especially on it. One copy of Harpy's Feather Duster, since this deck does like to go first or second, and backyard decks are annoying. One call by the grave to stop hand traps. Or an Alistair that my opponent's trying to use while activating invocation. Then I play two copies of Salvage. Salvage just has the effect you can target two water monsters in your grave with 1500 or less attack, add them back to your hand. Then I play two copies of Freezing Chains of the Ice Barrier. All this card does is you can activate one per Freezing Chains per turn. So when activated, you can target one ice barrier, one level four lower ice barrier monster in your graveyard, special summon it. And then while you control three or more ice barrier monsters, ice barrier monsters you control are unaffected by your opponent's activated effects of your opponent's monsters are so from the extra deck. So essentially, if you control three ice barriers, then your monsters are unaffected by effects of cards like Destroyer, Phoenix Forcer, or Red Eyes Dark Dragoon, which is actually amazing. Then I play three copies of Medallion of the Ice Barrier. This card just lets, is just reinforcing the army for Ice Barrier, just letting you add any Ice Barrier monster from your deck to your hand. Then I play three copies of Winds Over the Ice Barrier. All this card does is lets you tribute any number of... Let's see, is it actually specific? You tribute any number of Ice Barrier monsters to the special song from your deck, that many level four or lower Ice Barrier monsters with different names from, from each other. And then during the main phase, except the card, turn this card was sent to the graveyard. You can banish this card from your graveyard, then target one of your ice barrier monsters that is banished or in your graveyard, add to your hand. You can only use each effect of wins over the ice barrier once per turn. So I like this card because of how if you have two monsters in play, but you would rather have two other ones. So like for example, two Zuijin, but you'd rather have someone like... Uh, uh, Revealer and Defender. You can tribute those two, summon those two from the deck. And then you can recycle cards from your grave by uh, using the grave effect of wins. Then for the traps, I play three copies of Crackdown so you can steal your opponent's monster. And then if I remember correctly, when Crackdown is destroyed, your opponent just doesn't get their monster back because it doesn't say anything like when this card leaves a field from that monster. It just says take control of my opponent's monster. So Crackdown's dumb in that way. Then I play three copies of Fiendish Chain. This card is like to target one effect monster your opponent controls, negates effects, and they cannot attack while face up. Or while Fiendish Chain is activated. Or active, I should say. So I just like this card because it's just another negation card that also prevents attacking. Then because it is by Ice Barrier, I found it appropriate to play three copies of Ice Dragon's Prison. This just lets you target one monster, your opponent's graveyard, summon it to your field in the fence position. And then you can banish one monster from each side of the field that has the same type. So what I like to do with this card is, if my opponent activates Destroy a Phoenix Forces effect, I will chain Ice Dragon's Prison, summon Destiny Hero Dasher from their grave, to then banish Dasher and Phoenix Forcer. Which then effectively kills the Celestial as in grave. So that's why I think Ice Dragon's Prison is actually really good right now. But that's it for the main deck. Moving on to the extra deck. So I play three copies of Dulorin, the Tire King of the Ice Barrier. Dulorin is, I think, is actually a decent monster by having the effect that you can target any number of other face-up cards you control. Return those targets to your hand, and if you do, this card gains 500 attack for each of those cards turned into the hand but by its effect. Until the end of the turn. You can only use each effect of I just like it because of how if you use it with your one of three copies of Brainiac Dra Dragon Ice Barrier, 
you can make your Lauren get really big fast, and then you can use Beer and the next effect, discarding any number of cards or turn equal number of cards from your opponent's field back to their hand. It's so like you are able to return three, then you have three additional cards that Breer and Neck can then discard to return up to three cards your opponent controls to the hand. Then I play three copies of Gungnir, Dragon of the Ice, or Gungnir, I should say, of Dragon of the Ice Barrier. Gungnir has the effect of once per turn you can discard up to two cards to the graveyard, then target one, or then target the same number of cards your opponent controls and destroy them. So you can discard two to destroy two cards your opponent controls. Or you can discard one. Then I play one copy of Scarlet Red Dragon Archfiend, one Cyphering Lord Omega, and then the one Cybers Quantum Dragon. Scarlet has the effect of once per turn, you can activate its effect to destroy as many special land monsters on the field that have an equal or lower attack than Re Scarlet Red Dragon Archfiend. And I forgot they do have to be effective monsters. And then destroy them, and then your opponent takes 500 points of damage for every monster destroyed by its effect. Omega has the effect of during your opponent's standby phase, you can take one banished monster and put it back into the graveyard. And then during the main phase, quick effect, you can activate its ability to then banish itself and one card from your opponent's hand until the next standby phase. Or until your next standby, I mean. And then its last effect is if it's in the graveyard, you can activate its effect targeting one other card in your graveyard. Return Shuffle itself and that targeted card back into the deck. And then Quantum Dragon. In this deck, its only ability is if it battles a monster, then you can activate its effect, return that attacking monster back to the hand, or that opponent's monster back to the hand. And then if you do it again, it's a second attack that turn. And that's pretty much all it does. Then I play one copy of Trishula Dragon the Ice Barrier. Trishula just has the effect of when single summoned, you can banish one card in your opponent's hand, field, and graveyard. Or, and or graveyard, I should say. Because that's, Trishula is, uh, you can use even if your opponent doesn't have any cards in field or grave. Then I play one copy of Trishula, Sub-Zero, Dragon the Next Barrier. Sub-Zero has the effect of if it's Synchro Summoned, you can banish up to three cards your opponent controls. So I just like it because of how you're able to just non-target banish. So cards like Red Eyes Dark Dragoon can be banished since it does not target. And then if Trishula, Sub-Zero, Dragon the Ice Barrier is destroyed, then you special summon a Trishula, Dragon the Ice Barrier from your extra deck with 3200 attack. And is that treated as it being a Synchro Summon? You extra deck or graveyard, it's tap monster. Then have the blah, 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 blah. No. But when it dies, you summon a Trishula, dragging the ice barrier from your extra deck or graveyard with 3300 attack, and then you have the attack of all other monsters in play. And you can only use e that each effect of Trishula's sub zero dragging the ice barrier once per turn. And before someone says it, I know it's technically Trishula's zero dragging the ice barrier, it's saying sub zero is better. And then the extra deck card that I ever actually have summoned this deck, but I thought it was appropriate because it is a Trishula, and that is the one copy of Trishula, the Dragon of Icy Imprisonment. This card just requires three monsters with different names, but I will typically use it by using Trishula, Dragon of Ice Barrier, Gungnir, or Brianek, any combination of the three. Or, I mean, any combination of three. Just those three. But that's because... It has to either be used fusion summoned using only monsters from your hand or field, or spread summoned by tributing monsters from your field. In which case, you don't use super polymer, you don't use polymerization. But it only gets the next effect if all the materials used were originally dragon. That effect being, you can reveal and banish three cards: one from your deck, one from the top of your opponent's deck, and one from their extra deck. But otherwise, you can just give up three monsters of different names to summon a 27 to protect Trishla. But that is it for my Ace Barrier deck profile. If you have any ideas why you need to improve the deck, any ideas for decks that you make, or decks like to see you face each other, feel free to comment those below. And thanks for watching.